everybody, welcome to Fly Together, brought to you by Most 529, our great partner here on the show, and uh, of course, Missouri's Education Savings Plan, which you can learn all about right now at MissouriMost.org. I'm Andrew Buckbinder, happy to have you along with us here, and we appreciate you kicking off the weekend with us on this Friday evening. We've got a great show. We uh, are going to be joined here in just a moment by one of our favorite partners to talk to. We've had him up in the radio booth many times. He always makes us hungry. It's Chris Guest from Maria's Mexican Restaurant joining us here in a moment. We've also got a brand new segment with Dan Ryder, our vice president and general manager, of course, called Stuff Under Dan's Desk. We are giving away Dan's stuff every week on this show. That's going to range from autograph memorabilia to past giveaway items, a whole bunch of good stuff. Uh, really easy to enter in to win Dan's stuff. All you have to do each week is just comment on this video or like the video. Uh, if you're watching on Facebook, comment on the video if you're watching on YouTube. And we will pick a winner each week. We'll announce the winner in next week's episode. And we'll unveil what Dan's giving away next week as well. So stay tuned for that segment here in just a little bit to find out what you can win. And again, be sure to comment and like this video to, uh, to enter our, our weekly Dan drawing. We've also got a new edition of Bird Bites brought to you by American National. We'll catch up with Cardinals pitcher Evan Krasinski and put him on the hot seat. And of course, learn about all the things that we need to be doing to our yard right now with Brock and Derek in this week's Ryan Lawn and Tree Grounds Crew Yard Tips. So jam-packed show this week. We can't wait to get going and we're going to dive right in with Chris Guest from Maria's Mexican Restaurant. Well, we continue along here on Fly Together, brought to you by Most 529, and uh, a familiar face. We don't normally get to see his face because we're normally chatting with him in the radio booth during games, but Chris Guest from Maria's Mexican Restaurant is joining us uh, currently on the South Side location, the brand, new, the brand new restaurant, right? Yeah, we just opened up. Actually, our first day at the Go Food was April 30th, so uh, we've been open about two weeks, dine in now, and well, you know how dine is dine in is now. We can't have all that many people inside, really, still. So, yeah. Before we before we dive into that, I wanted to ask you first and foremost, just uh, how are you doing, and, and how's Monica and your whole family? Is everybody doing okay? Yeah, we're doing good. We're doing good. We actually haven't had anybody uh, get sick either at either restaurant, so we've been doing real good with that, and uh, been been very careful with it, and trying to keep that keep it that way so that we don't uh, have any issues. Uh, but we've been real, real lucky that, uh, you know, especially with exposure outside of a restaurant, you know, you never know, but everybody's wearing their masks and doing the things they need to, to stay healthy. So, yeah. What, what are some of those things? I, I know, you know, there's, there's some sort of vague guidelines and then it seems like a lot are left up to the, the individual restaurants to sort of figure out how far they want to go. So what, what are, what are some things that, you know, you know we, yeah, lots of different steps, you know, having sanitizers everywhere for all my servers to use uh, all the time. So they, they are wearing gloves. Um, it's not necessary to wear gloves, um, but we are just just to. But it's more, you know, the truth of it is, is washing your hands, wash your hands, wash your hands. Uh, the sanitizer is fine, but nothing, nothing actually beats washing your hands and keeping your hands clean. Uh, you know, with the new CDC thing saying that, the surfaces really aren't the biggest uh, problem as they were. That makes a big difference that we don't, uh, that at least, you know, that makes us feel a lot safer at least, that, that, that it's not living on surfaces for 72 hours. But um, yeah, that's a big deal for us actually to, 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 to help us out with that. Yeah, absolutely. And you guys, you are, are uh, at the Southside location. Tell us a little bit about, uh, about the, the brand new restaurant down there. You guys are on South Campbell, right? Yeah, 4610 South Campbell. We're right out here, right across from the library. Um, you can get around. Our parking lot does drive through, so you can get in either on the back side or the front side. So you can actually come in the back of the parking lot or the front of the parking lot. It makes it a little easier to get to. So you can't just turn left off of uh, when you're heading south on Campbell. Um, we are about, well, we're about a little bit smaller than downtown, but not much. We seat about the same amount of people. We do have a nice patio out here. Uh, we're getting ready to actually do the patio again downtown with the curbside seating. Uh, the city's really getting behind that, so we're going to be having that down there as well. Uh, but uh, the new restaurant, of course, we couldn't do the same as downtown because the downtown building's 125 years old. This is not not that so we went a little bit different with it you know you got to go either the opposite way because you can't re recreate that 125 year old building 
Uh, so this is it's much different, but all the food and all all the drinks are the same. Okay, I was going to ask you because you know that the Helena tacos are in my heart forever, so I I can get the Helena down uh, here on the south side too. Either location, yeah. The menu is exactly the same. Uh, we will be launching a uh, uh, a new insert menu, which will have some salads and maybe and some healthier choices on it. Uh, we just haven't been able to do that yet with the whole the whole situation that's going on right now. We're just trying to teach everybody and, you know, keeping staff has been tough and getting staff to come back has been tough, but we keep on working on it, so. Yeah, I would imagine it's it's got to just present a ton of challenges. And, and, you know, one of the things too, I don't know if a, if a lot of people know this, but when, when this all sort of went down and obviously the restaurant industry has been perhaps the most impacted, um, but when this all went down, you and, and Monica and your team, uh, when you guys had to sort of close down and regroup there back in what, March, April, um, donated a ton of food as well, right? To, to the hospitals in town and different organizations. Yeah, we, we did as much as we could because we didn't have, you know, it was, we weren't going to, for three weeks we closed downtown because we weren't going to be able to continue to, to create the food to put out to people. Um, so we just shut down for three weeks and there was no reason to let that food just go bad. So we got it out there and got it to the people who needed it that we, as much as we could at least. Yeah. Which is just awesome. And, and, uh, you know, just kind of another step in you guys being such a huge part of our community, uh, for what, almost 20 years downtown, right? You guys are coming up on an anniversary. Well, actually the sit down location is coming up on 20 years. Um, and, uh, 2001 and, and 2021, uh, we've, Monica's had it since 1997, so we've been downtown. She's had the takeout from 97 to 2001, so we're actually coming up on 24 years for the total. Wow, that's awesome! That's awesome, and uh, and a very exciting year one down south. Yeah, you know, I, I think that's just the way we do it. You know, uh, when we opened up downtown uh, on uh, September 9th, we opened up August 28, 2001. September 9th, there was the ballet fire I, for people who actually were are from Springfield. The, the building next door to us caught on fire, so it shut us down on Monday, September 10th. And uh, 2001, September 11th, we all remember. So that that's the that was the first restaurant we opened, and then this one we have the COVID 19. So it's just a Maria's way, I guess. Open up when there's something crazy going on. That's <laughs> it. You guys have you guys have uh, have had to adapt before. It sounds like. Yes, yes, we have. Uh, so it's, you know, but we've been doing real well. Well, you know, downtown has been a struggle too, and south side has been a struggle, but we're working on both of them now, and uh, and they're both getting, you know, better every day, and hopefully uh, this will, you know, keep going the way it is, and people, we won't have any more reoccurrences, and we can actually get to 50%, and then hopefully 100% of uh, being able to seat everybody. And you mentioned the patio, Chris. We'll, we'll let you go in here in a minute, but I wanted to touch on this. You mentioned the patio, uh, particularly on the south side, but also um, with the new regulations and, and loosening on parking and all that, opening it up a, a little bit more downtown. Dan Ryder has already tested out the patio on the south side to rave reviews. He said it's great. Um, so that is an option. If folks are out there that aren't comfortable yet, even with all of the precautions you guys are taking, they might just not be comfortable eating in quite yet. Uh, but the patio is a great option that, that is a little bit more open air. And then folks can still order out, right? You guys will do to-go orders? Yeah, we're still doing takeout. Uh, we're not doing curbside on the south side. Uh, most people actually uh, downtown don't want to do curbside, but... Uh, so it's usually you come in, you get your food right now. And uh, if you do pull up to the front door, we will, you know, if we have the ability, we'll bring it out to you. Yeah. Well, that's great, Chris. We, we appreciate you taking the time. Um, thank you to you and, and Monica, you guys, whole family, the whole Maria's team uh, for being a great partner of ours, for one, for years and years, but also um, all the all the work and, and commitment to the community uh, on, a, on a larger scale that you guys have done. Well, we do what we can, and uh, that's what we'll always do. You know, uh, we are—we have been part of the part of the community for a long time, and and we hope to be part of the community for even longer. So, uh, now on the south side, I do have a partner. It's not just me and Monica. We do have a partner, James Stillman, who's part of our uh, part of our group out here. We did that um, in the hopes of expanding here in, in sometime in the future. But we're not thinking about the future right now. We're thinking about now and trying to get get through it and keep everybody healthy and safe, especially with all the new stuff going on too. 
Yeah, no, that sounds great. And, and hopefully we'll get back to normal soon. Um, and uh, I'm sure Megan and I will see you guys for a margarita and some Helena tacos here shortly. All right, you have a great day, brother. Thanks, Chris. Like the song says, it's one, two, three strikes, you're out. But right now, we're not talking strikeouts, we're talking savings. Did you know a most 529 education plan gives you one, two, three ways to save on your taxes? First, in a most 529, your educational savings grow tax deferred. Second, all contributions are deductible on your Missouri state income taxes. And third, you are not taxed on withdrawals to pay for qualified educational expenses. You could say it's a win-win-win. Get the fast facts at MissouriMost.com slash 529 facts. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in for the We Love Our Fans segment. I'm Regina Norris, joining you all from my front porch. Throughout the week, we asked you to show us your bobblehead collection, so let's get started and see what you all shared with us. share their bobblehead collection with us. Now is the perfect time to gather your own memorabilia and continue to share and spread that cardinal spirit. Next episode, we are going to bring another piece of the ballpark to your home screens, so be sure to tune in, and I'll see you all next time on the We Love Our Fans segment. We continue along in this week's Fly Together, brought to you by Most 529, with a brand new edition of Bird Bites, brought to you by American National, where Matt Turr, RPR and digital media specialist, and I fire some fun questions at our Springfield Cardinals. This week, joining us all the way from Franklin, Wisconsin, Cardinals pitcher Evan Krasinski. Well, we continue along in this week's episode of Fly Together, brought to you by Most 529 with a brand new edition of Bird Bites. And joining us from the great state of Wisconsin is Evan Krasinski, Springfield Cardinals starting pitcher. Evan, before we jump into the hard-hitting journalism uh, and the questions we have lined up for you, how you doing? I'm good. Uh, staying ready, doing what I can to pass the time and uh, enjoying the time at home. I guess uh, when the opportunity presents itself. So just doing what I can do. Well, and, and you're up in Wisconsin where you're from, right? Yep. And, you know, it's, it's a little bit similar to here where this is the first time I would imagine in a long time, not that any of us wouldn't trade this in a heartbeat to be at a ballpark, but probably the first time in years that you've gotten to enjoy springtime in your home state, which is like the best time to be in Wisconsin, right? Yeah, I mean – didn't really get to enjoy much until this weekend. It finally like, cracked 70. So good timing for it for Memorial Day weekend. But no, it was weird. Uh, my birthday was on March 31st. It's the first time I was home for my birthday in seven years. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah, you were normally on the bus to Midland by then. <laughs> some, some type of long trip. Well, we'll, uh, we'll jump right in. So to lead off our, uh, our bird bites here, since we're talking about you being home, what is your favorite home-cooked meal? Home cooked meal. I'm a big uh, chicken mozzarella. Dad makes a pretty good chicken mozzarella, so I'd have to go that. Is that chicken and mozzarella? Is there like, is there more to it, or is that? That sounds incredible. Just chicken is that and cheese. Any, anything like chicken parmesan? It's it's sort of like chicken parmesan, but it's like more like the cafeteria type. You remember that <laughs> growing up as a kid? Like it's yeah, just yeah, yeah. Without the noodles. For sure. Yeah. Like, uh, For sure. Yeah, it's it's pretty good. Nice. All right. So, what's your uh, what's your favorite little league memory? Jeez, that I mean, that was the prime of Evan Krasinski baseball was little league, um, <laughs> just two way star. Um, it would have to be hitting two home runs in the first inning of like the district all stars. So, 
when I went to school in North Carolina, it blew my mind that nobody played Little League. Everyone played travel ball. So in mm -hmm. my growing up in Franklin, Wisconsin, we played in the tournament that competed to go to the Little League World Series. So when I finally turned 12, and it was the first inning of the first game of districts, I had two home runs in the first inning. So that had to be my uh, Little League highlight. Gosh, for you to get up twice in the first inning, that, did that even get out of, like, the third where they mercy rule? Yeah, and it was funny. My best friend on the first one uh, missed home plate, and he got on base again for the second one, and he uh, stomped home plate, and the umpire wasn't very happy about that. If, if you were inclined to get a haircut during a quarantine, and this person cannot be your barber, but who would you choose to give you that haircut? Yeah, clearly I haven't uh, seen one of those in a while. But um, my uncle uh, actually came over and cut my dad's hair. So I, I almost hopped in, but um, I wasn't ready to give it up yet. If, if I can grow hair, I might as well do it while I can, right? Yeah, no doubt. Can we see that hair without the hat on, or are you hiding something? I did just get home from a workout, and I had to rush on. It's more of like a mullet right now, but it's uh, – it's long. I'll definitely have to trim it up before uh, hopefully I re we report here soon. All right. Um, what's your favorite or what was or is your favorite Halloween costume? Well, my go-to every year was, uh, was Rocky just because I could go out and buy a gray pair of sweatpants, this gray sweatshirt, just tape up my hands and put a hat on. I look like Rocky. I was I was balling on a budget back in college, so that was like the easy one every year. I could just get something for cheap. But um, I'd have to go favorite would be uh, when we went to the fall league in, what was that, 18. Me, Tommy, you know, I went as uh, Elf, Buddy the Elf. I had like the tall, you know, I already had that taken care of, but got the fro, got the costume, and um, I never heard so many people wish that I found my dad that night. <laughs> I feel like there there've got to be pictures of this somewhere, right? Yeah, yeah. If you go to my Instagram uh at Evan Cruz, you know, got to build up the uh the social networking, but uh, yeah, there's one on my Instagram. Uh okay, so your least favorite household chore. True. Well, growing up in Wisconsin has to be snow blowing or in my case, shoveling. Um snow blower was off limits. That was strictly for my dad, but uh, anytime I had a shovel, that, that's the reason why I got out of the north for college. I, I didn't want to see snow again. Now, did you guys ever do, did you and, and like your buddies or anything ever try to turn it into a capitalistic venture where you'd go around the neighborhood and try to sell your services shoveling snow? I hated it so much that I would like pay kids my age to come do it for me. Like the little money I could scrap up, I'd have them come shovel it for me. That's how much I hated the snow. So, <laughs> Yeah, I feel like Wisconsin snow, too, is probably a different story. You yeah. Know, we're both Northeast guys here, me and Matt, but we probably have no idea. It's got to be a lot heavier. Yeah, especially when I was in college, everyone's like, I can't wait for snow. I was like, I came down here to never see snow again. I don't want to see snow. What was the last movie you watched? I'm not a big movie guy, honestly. If if I scroll across one on TV, let's see, what was I watching the other day? Um, who, uh, Sylvester Stallone. What's what's Rambo? Rocky? Rambo. Oh. First time I've ever seen Rambo. It was on TV the other day, and I watched it. Um, let's say uh, digital technology has come a long way. There was some yeah. uh, pretty pretty rough scenes in that movie. I'm sure it was the first one. I'm I'm not even sure, but um, yeah, it was uh, very below average. Have you ever watched a movie that doesn't have Sylvester Stallone in it? I don't know. Yeah. Just, just a lot. I guess. Yeah, he's been brought up. He's been brought up a lot today. No, let's see. I'm not. I'm not even a big fan. Like, I don't think I've ever seen a Rocky from start to finish. For being honest, I just looked up cheap costumes, and that was the first one that came up. Was there was nice pants and a gray sweatshirt, put a little cap on, and tape up your hands. So this could, uh, <laughs> that, that piece of information could impact this question. But if you were um, in Harry Potter, what house would you be in, in Harry Potter? Asking the wrong guy. No I, idea? Okay. I, Must be a I think, I, I think I may have seen three of them, never read a book. Um, I mean, I've read a book, but never read a Harry Potter book. 
Uh, I mean, I, I think there's like Slytherin and like Huffle. I Hufflepuff. We'll go Hufflepuff. I don't know. Yeah, to see, me, I, I don't feel know like, who's who though. Which one is Harry? I feel like someone as a kid who's, you know, thinking about the process enough to pay someone else to shovel his snow would probably be a Ravenclaw. Okay. I, I don't know who's in that one. Yeah, I don't know either. Yeah. That's like the that's like the thinking man's group. It is the thinking man's group. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I'm not. I'm not gonna say I wasn't a fan of the movies that I did watch. I was actually watching in this spring training with uh, Ryan Meisinger and Chris Ellis. Those are my roommates this spring, and they were watching them. And I actually still have one downloaded on my little Fire Stick from them buying it, but I won't watch it. But I'll, I'll I'll watch if somebody else has it on, but. Sure. Not really up my alley. All right. Beach or mountains? Can I substitute lake? There's lakes and mountains. And I'm going to have to go mountains. I've always <laughs> argued going from Wisconsin to North Carolina, we were, you know, 30 minutes off the coast. I would always just say how much better the, the lake life was than the, the beach life. Beach life is just a commitment. If you're going to the beach, you're not going to the beach for a couple hours. You can just go on the lake for a little bit, ride around on the boat, maybe just sit on the on the shore. But if you go, if you're going to the beach, it's you're in for the long haul. So, do you fish when you're in the lake, or you just go and kind of cruise around and hang out? I'll do whatever. Um, I, I'm a big. I, I like to fish. I'm not very good at it. Um, I, I'm a pretty patient guy, so I can just sit out there and enjoy being out in the water. I don't care if I catch anything or not. So I, I know one pastime that is close to your heart is golfing. Oh, yeah. Uh, Terrible at it. <laughs> like, for, that's, that's the number one thing is people are like, man, you always golf. I'm like, yeah. And then they go out and play with me. And they're like, for your, as much as you golf, you're not very good. I'm not out there to shoot a 90. I'm not out there to shoot a 70. I'm out there to shoot a 90. If I break 90, that's a good day for me. I know. So what's your all-time, like, best golf moment? The round that I made it through without losing a golf ball. I, I mean, oh wow, that never happens ever because I, I can hit it. The problem is, I miss. In baseball, you don't want to miss middle. In golf, you want to miss middle, and I need to switch those two up a little bit. Baseball, I miss middle too much, and in golf, I don't miss middle at all. It's always <laughs> missing way out and never down the middle. <laughs> it's uh, it's a pretty big problem I have and when I do run into one though it, it'll go but then I'll probably duff my chip or something like that and no consistent part of my golf game last question for you what's the favorite moment of your career so far favorite moment of my career so far is that including pro ball and college we, yeah, just sure. pro ball? be a pro in college um college would have to be you know winning the, the regional at the University of Virginia my junior year. That was a pretty cool experience. So I get to hold against Connor Jones, so that's always a good time. Anytime we can be – and he actually started the game. We, we beat them. So he didn't take the loss. Their uh, lever blew it. But anytime I can hold that against Connor Jones, that's always fun. Um, he's, he's a good friend, though. Uh, and then um, professionally um, – basically everything from double A in 2018. That was just such a fun time. Um, you know, we kind of made a comeback there in the second half, made a little push at it. Didn't uh, eventually push into the playoffs, but it's just a fun time playing baseball with a good group of guys and just uh, something I'll probably take with me forever. Uh, Evan Krasinski, you survived bird bites. Uh, we appreciate you taking the time and joining us and uh, look forward to seeing you back on the mound, hopefully sometime soon. I yeah, appreciate it. Thanks for having me on. And we're back again with another week of Grounds Crew Yard Tips brought to you by Ryan Lawn and Tree. I'm Matt Turr, the Cardinal social media guy, as I've said, but I'm also Springfield's number one person that needs these yard tips from our grounds crew. This week, Brock Phipps is going to be telling us how to stripe the outfield here at Hammonds Field. If you've been to Hammonds Field and you've seen how beautiful it is, you've seen the, man, before I even started this, I didn't know what to call them, but the designs in the outfield, which is called striping. He's going to tell you how we do that here and then how you can try your best eh, to replicate that at home.
You might wonder how we strapped the field here at Hammonds Field. It's actually easier than what you think. With some proper tools and healthy grass, you can achieve the same look on your own yard. Here's a few tips to achieve your stripes on your own yard. First, start with a healthy grass stand. The taller the grass, the easier it is to stripe. And a lot of times, the type of grass makes a big difference also. With bluegrass, fescue, and ryegrass, it is easier to stripe. You can also achieve this look with the proper equipment. Like our mowers here at Hammonds Field, we have rollers on them. So a proper roller kit on your back of your mower will help to achieve this. Also using a PVC pipe filled with sand will help to achieve this also. One of the main things is to cut your grass high. The higher the grass is cut, the easier the grass will lay over to achieve the pattern. If the grass is laying towards you, it's gonna look darker. And if the grass is cut away from you, it's gonna look lighter to achieve your patterns. Thanks for watching, we'll see you next week. Okay, ready for the first ever segment of Stuff Under Dan's Desk. <laughs> it's appropriately named. We're going to welcome in Dan Ryder and find out what he's got under his desk as he cleans out his office and gives away some really cool memorabilia, some giveaway items, and more. So, again, to enter into this giveaway each week, all you have to do is comment on this video each week or like the video. We'll pick a, a lucky winner for Dan's stuff each week. We'll announce that winner next week and have uh, have more Dan's stuff to give away. So let's get right to it with Dan Ryder, our Vice President and General Manager. As we continue along in this week's episode of Fly Together, brought to you by Most 529, we welcome back our Vice President and General Manager, Dan Ryder. Dan, it's good to see you. How you doing? I'm doing great, Andrew. How about yourself? We're doing well. We're doing well. We're just rolling along here. And because we like to have fun and we like to uh, to mix things up a little bit, we've got a brand new segment with uh, with you, of course, uh, called Stuff Under Dan's Desk. Yes. Well, right now, you know, I, I, I like to work. You know, I think that's uh, pretty obvious for anyone that knows me. So what I don't like to do is to slow down and clean up my office all the time. So what I've done during uh, this pandemic is I've used some of the time here to clean up. Um, and I've, I've found some interesting stuff, some old paperwork, some new things. Um, so we thought it'd be kind of fun to maybe give away some of the stuff that has been found under Dan's desk. So <laughs> would you like to see the, the items I found that we can give away today? Yeah, what do you got? All right, well, first of all, uh, first of all, uh, let's, start with, let's start with this one here. First of all, I have a 2004 National League Champions Beer Stein from Budweiser. So for anyone who's ever wanted one of those Budweiser Championship Beer Steins, um, it's in mint condition, for in case you're curious. Um, so we've got the Stein, but we also have um, an autographed baseball from Lane Thomas. So uh, whenever Lane was here, um, you know, he, he was he was awesome. I mean, he just, he was so great to work with, um, just a genuinely nice person. And before he left, he autographed some baseballs. Um, and I found a couple of those baseballs. Yeah, so we teased this a little bit earlier in the show. The way to enter in to win the Lane Thomas autograph ball in the Budweiser 2004 uh, beer stein is comment right now on this video uh, right below. You can also like the post as well if you don't have anything to say, but feel free to tell us you're watching. Say hey uh, in the comment section on this video and we will uh, select a lucky winner and then we'll announce that lucky winner in next week's episode. So comment right now as you're watching and then tune back in next week and we will uh, at the start of the show next week we'll announce the winner of the Lane Thomas autograph ball and the Budweiser beer stein and uh, we'll keep rolling each week we'll have a new, <laughs> a new giveaway from uh, from under your desk. Yeah you, there's all kinds of fun stuff under Dan's desk. So. <laughs> Uh, we get maybe some more autographs, some more giveaways. Uh, I've got a few snacks too. So at some point we might be giving away a, a package of mixed nuts for anyone that really wants them. Hopefully not as old as the beer stud. No, no, they're they're the emerald ones. So they're uh, uh, the 100 calorie pack, but we're not giving them away this week. That's yeah. for me to see. Yeah, we've got to pace ourselves here. We'll start with the ball and the beer stud <laughs> and maybe we'll work in the mixed nuts next week. Yep, yep. So. Hmm. Again, uh, now now I'm a little worried. Like, okay, I don't want to give away. I don't, some of the stuff is fantastic. I'm kind of looking at it right now. So I'll selectively pick the, the stuff under Dan's desk that we give away. 
Yeah, sounds good. Sounds good. Well, Dan, we appreciate it as always. Thanks for giving away your stuff. And uh, we'll check back in with you next week for the new giveaway next time. Sounds great. Good to see you, Andrew. Take care. Well, that's all for this week's episode of Fly Together, brought to you by Most 529. I want to say another big thanks to our guests this week, including Chris Guest from Maria's Mexican Restaurant, Evan Krasinski, our, uh, our good buddy up there in Franklin, Wisconsin, joining us for Bird Bites, Brock and Derek doing a great job, as always, with the yard tips, and, of course, Dan Ryder hopping on as well to give away his stuff from under his desk. For our production team, Ken Shelton, Matt Turr, TJ Patton, and Regina Norris, I'm Andrew Buckbinder. We've got a ballpark moment to take us home while we enjoy that. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll talk to you next week. Here's the 1-1. One -one. Swung on by the right field. Base hit. Zach Kirkley wins this game. Connor Cable scores. The Cardinals walk off 9-8 at hit.